What's up guys, big day for Apple today. In particular, iOS 11.3 Beta 1 has been released for all devices that currently support iOS 11. Apple's been talking about iOS 11.3 for the longest time and all of the features that it's supposed to bring, but today we can actually experience it. So in this video, I'll be showing you all of the new features. There's over 35 that I could see, features, changes, small things here and there, and how to install it at the very end. So we're gonna be talking about that, the preview in general, everything that this firmware is about, and uh, if you guys want to install at the end. Let's get to it. All right, so I'm going to start by showing you the version numbers. On the right, I'm going to be showing iOS 11.2.5 for comparison. On the left, 11.3. So first thing I wanted to start off with is in the setup menu, the first time you use it, you're going to see this interface right here, the privacy settings. So now there's a change. Whenever the privacy settings are being used in the status bar, you will see this icon here. It's two people shaking hands. Basically, when any of your personal data or information is going to be shared, you're going to see the icon in the status bar. Not so much a feature, but a change and one that I didn't like. This is a considerably large update. So before updating on a 64 gigabyte device, I had 55 gigabytes after only 52. So it took up three gigabytes to install this just for your consideration. If you guys wanted to install it, it will take up quite some storage. So one of the things Apple previewed earlier today before the release, they actually released several new and emojis for the iPhone 10. So if I scroll up here, you'll be able to see that there are four new ones a lion there's a dragon a skull and a teddy bear so pretty cool that apple is expanding to this adding new ones apple's fascination with emojis in general is quite interesting so many users with older iphones that were affected by the cpu throttling such as the iphone 6 6s or even iphone 7 are reporting that in ios 11.3 that throttling has been disabled so without a switch present there's no switch in settings or anything like that apple automatically disabled it and where where iPhone 6 users were getting about 900 megahertz single core score, they're now getting 1400, basically what it should be at. So it's unknown when Apple will add that switch in, but it will be in a later version of iOS 11.3 to disable and re-enable the throttling if you'd like it. But currently it's been disabled and as a result, a lot of people are having much faster iPhones, probably with a little bit shorter battery life. And there's a new business chat feature that Apple actually talked about before the release of iOS 11 that's finally getting implemented in iOS 11. 11.3, where you'll be able to talk with some of the major retailers within your messages application if you need their help. And from the get-go, Discover, Hilton, Lowe's, and Wells Fargo will be available using this feature. And Apple actually mentioned that the new battery settings for throttling, which are not present, will be available here in the battery section. So there will be more monitoring options here, and you'll be able to disable or re-enable that throttling within the battery settings. And here's an interesting one. So on the iPhone 10, there's a couple changes to the way the app switcher works. So first off, notice this when I swipe up the card appears first I wouldn't say it's faster to activate it's exactly the same but the card itself appears a little bit faster so watch that it just appears right there it's a little bit more intuitive I guess also the haptic feedback is almost instant on the iPhone 10 on 11.3 whereas here it's about twice as fast you have to wait like a second delay until you feel it so a little interesting change there and look at that is that a new icon nope iBooks has just been renamed to books there's no longer an i in front of it also, I noticed a small change inside. So when actually jumping in, there's no longer all books. It's just called library up top now. So that's been removed. I can't see samples in there either. Also on the top right over here, the select button has been replaced by edit. So also a small one. And when you open up messages for the very first time, you will see this prompt here. So messages on iCloud, there's a new splash screen. And yes, this feature is now enabled within iCloud settings. You're going to be able to get a toggle in order to activate iMessages over iCloud. So something Apple actually had in earlier versions of iOS 11 and then removed and now finally bringing it back. So you'll find that option here in iCloud and by default it is disabled. So you have to enable it manually. And an awesome change that Apple brought back in iOS 11 within the update section of the App Store, you'll now be able to see more details on updates such as the version number and the size of the update. This is something Apple regularly does show you but within the app settings themselves or the app details, now they're available in the update page. Now, I really don't know why Apple would remove this, but they actually got rid of the little Bluetooth indicator in the now playing music widget in the control center. As you can see, that little one right there that just ebbs blue, it's gone. Like you can't see it at all anymore. So you don't know when you have Bluetooth connected right away, but they did replace it with something else. So I noticed when you actually open up a pair of AirPods or start playing music, you will see a little icon in the top right that says that it's playing over the headphones. So I'm gonna go ahead 
and connect to these. Look at the top right here. You'll see that music icon or the headphones icon in the top right and it fades away. Kind of cool little subtle animation. Definitely is not there on 11.2.5. I also noticed a couple of things over here. So in the spotlight search, when you actually click on search, you're gonna get a different animation now on 11.3. So things are a little bit different. So it slides down from the top. So just watch this one, two, three. The animation is different, certainly has been changed up. It kind of slides down from the very top of the screen, not from the search bar. It's kind of weird. So uh, yeah, I did notice that. Also, when you jump into the dictation page and leave it, look at how fast this is. It's instant. So if I leave it, there's no delay, no fade out. It just leaves it right away. So again, just like this. Look at that, it leaves it right away. And jumping into settings, if we go to the main page here, you'll notice that the privacy icon is now blue instead of the old gray. And you'll notice at the bottom in system services, you now have a gear icon on the system services tab where previously it was just blank. In the accessibility page, if we jump into voiceover, you'll notice the description here has been made larger, easier to read, where before it was tidier, and there's more information here. And I was honestly disappointed to find that invert colors, the smart invert, not much has changed, but there was one tiny change that I managed to find in Safari. On the very top, the URL is no longer reversed. So that stays green here, the color of it, where previously it turned to purple, and uh, that's it. I couldn't find any other changes. I went through applications. The keyboard still gets reversed in third-party applications. Safari is reversed. It's kind of ridiculous. I wish they put more effort into it. Super tiny one, but in the health app, the splash screen has been adjusted. The next button lowered. And a major change Apple previewed earlier today. In the health app, you'll be able to sync your health records instantly with your care providers, and you'll be able to view them all in one place. And to accommodate that new feature, there is a new health record splash screen. As you can see here, you can sign up for the beta or previously it just looked like that and inside the home application your apple tv will now show up so you can disable it turn it off from within the home app and in general the home application home kit has received an update where it can authenticate without certain chip certification so that means a lot more compatibility with future products and within the news application apple is making some adjustments they'll be improving the top stories and making a new video section to feature the top video content in the for you tab and apple will be making similar adjustments within the music application actually from their press release earlier today it says that they'll be heavily featuring music videos in the for you tab or the video section of apple music so get ready to see a lot more video content within your music application and users are reporting that airplay multi-room support or airplay 2 support has been added in 11.3 and is working already so as you can see multi-room support here is working and within ios 11.3 apple has added support for advanced mobile location so when you call 911, your location data will automatically be shared with the responder. So that way they save that precious time where they're asking you what's going on. And sometimes you can't even respond. So that's been enabled in here. And I'm sure you'll be able to disable it if you really want to. And AR kit has been updated to 1.5 in 11.3. And that means it now has support for vertical surfaces like walls, irregular shaped surfaces like circular tables, support for autofocus and 50% higher resolution. So all around some great improvements to the AR capabilities. And the feedback app returns so like in every beta we see a new application you'll be able to submit bug reports here to apple and for the ipad users are reporting that lag when entering the control center has been improved in this version so it's been made much more responsive quicker and the lag has been reduced and a few new features that were discovered by developers so not something you'll be able to see by yourself but ios 11.3 has the ability to hide ios updates from supervised devices for up to 90 days and safari in ios 11.3 has the ability to save GIFs as MP4s or silent videos and thus reducing the size of that file. And you're able to use password autofill within the web view of applications. So both of the password of the application you're using can be shared with a web view inside of it. And when saving a website to your home screen, the shortcut is now capable of accessing your camera according to this developer. And for those that want to download iOS 11.3 developer beta today, I can show you how to do that real quick. So I'll leave a link down below in the description. 
You just click on it and it'll take you here. So go ahead and click download and you will download the developer profile. So reboot your device after this and you will see iOS 11.3 available in your over the air update settings. So that's how to install it. Now I wanted to talk about performance. So on my iPhone 10, really couldn't say I noticed a difference, but let's check the Geekbench. So compared to iOS 11.2.5, I'm gonna run this real quick. And here's that score on iOS 11.3. Can't say there's anything spectacular about it. Pretty average, very similar to 11.2.2 here. And uh, overall, the usability of it can't say that there is anything different either on my iPhone 10. If you have an older device and you've updated, let me know how the performance is. But I am thinking about doing a speed test on all devices. So maybe I will consider doing that. And there it is, guys. iOS 11.3, jam-packed with new features and changes with many more to come. We still haven't seen the battery management features or the parental control improvements. So we'll have to see when Apple adds those in a future beta. But I am excited for the features to come. Also, no sign of night or dark mode, which I would have liked to see. I was hoping we'd see it in 11.3, but apparently not. Anyways, guys, stay tuned on any updates on this. Peace.